So here are a couple of questions from a section in a calculus textbook where we are asked to determine what the intervals of continuity for these functions are. So <clears throat> in this first function, what I would suggest doing really any time you're asked to determine intervals of continuity is to determine what the domain of the function is because if it's not, if it's not a piecewise function, uh, generally a function is going to be continuous on its domain. Uh, piecewise functions are trickier to handle though and uh, you have to be a lot more careful with them. So we're going to try to determine what the domain of this function is, what x values are allowed to go into this. Now if you look inside the natural log function here, x plus 1, that's continuous, but nat natural logarithms do not allow 0 or negatives to be inside of them. So x plus 1 better be above 0 in order for this function to be defined. And the reason why, if you want a quick graphical explanation for that, here's the graph, not of this function, but here's the graph of the natural log of x. We don't allow 0, right? The x of 0 doesn't have a point on this graph, and none of these x's that are negative have a point on this graph. So when we look at this function, we can't have what's inside the natural log function being 0 or negative. We have to make sure x plus 1 is greater than 0. So if we're trying to solve this, pretty simple to do, we're just going to subtract 1 from each side, x has to be greater than negative 1. If x is greater than negative 1, the natural log function is going to be defined, and our function is therefore going to be defined. So in interval notation, how we would state this, now we can't include negative 1, because if x is negative 1, we'd get 0 inside this function. So we're going to use a parenthesis rather than a bracket indicating we're not including negative 1 in the domain and we're going onward to infinity. Now since this isn't a piecewise function we don't really run the risk of having uh, any jumps or anything like that happening anywhere in between negative 1 or infinity and this function is going to be continuous on its domain so this function is if I could spell continuous on the interval from negative 1 onward to infinity. So this one is yeah a little tricky because we had to be delicate with the natural log but not too bad. The problem over here number 25 is actually going to be considerably tougher. Uh, this domain is going to have to be found in a similar fashion. A square root would only allow zero or positives underneath it. So when we're trying to find the domain of this we would hopefully realize well we need to make sure that x plus 3 is greater than or equal to, we're allowed to be equal to 0 in this case. If we subtract 3 from both sides, uh, we'd get x has to be greater than negative 3. We're allowed to put negative 3 into this function because negative 3 plus 3 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. So the domain of this function would go from negative 3 onward to infinity. We're including the negative 3 and we're indicating that by putting a bracket beside it in the domain of this one. Is this function continuous on its domain? Well, what I can tell you right now for this function is this. The limit as x approaches negative 3 on this function does not exist. The reason why we know that is because we can't approach negative 3 from the smaller side. This domain doesn't include any values to the left of negative 3. So if we're trying to claim that this function is continuous from negative 3 to infinity, we're going to have to modify the definition of continuity in order to do so uh, and ensure that on the side of negative 3 that we can actually approach it from, given the domain of this function, we do have that one-sided limit equaling our function value at the x value of 3. So this is what makes intervals of continuity kind of tricky. It's easy if it's an open interval. There's not a lot to, to worry about because you're not trying inclu to include that endpoint in the domain, or excuse me, in the interval of continuity. But when you have a domain that has an endpoint included in it, to include that in the interval of continuity, you have to modify the definition of continuity because this is automatically happening at that endpoint because it's impossible to approach from both sides. So the side of negative 3 that we're allowed to approach from, given the domain of this function, is the bigger side. We have values of x represented here that are bigger than negative 3, but not smaller. And so if we try to evaluate this limit, once you are okay with the fact that a number 
slightly bigger than negative 3, negative 2.9 goes here, you add 3, you get close to 0, but you are on the bigger side of 0. Once you realize that you're going to be taking the square root of a small positive, you're allowed to, to say, all right, I can evaluate this limit. I'm going to put 0 in place of, or excuse me, I'm going to put negative 3 in place of my x, and I'm going to get a limit of 0. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the bigger side on this function is 0. The limit on the smaller side doesn't exist because we're going to end up with negatives under the root, and that's going to be an issue. We're going to get imaginary values. What does f of 0 equal? Well, f of 0 is going to be the, not f of 0, excuse me. We're trying to include negative 3, not 0. So what does f of negative 3 equal? Well, it's going to be negative 3 in for x plus 3. That's going to be 0 under the root. Square root of 0 equals 0. Since the limit as we approached negative 3 on the only side of negative 3 that we could approach from, given the domain of this function, since that limit equals the function value at that point, what we can say in conclusion here is that this function is continuous on its domain. And that would be negative 3 onward to infinity. Point to take from this example, the sequence of examples would be if you're claiming you're continuous on an open interval, you don't have to modify the definition of continuity because you're not trying to include that endpoint and the limit's not going to exist at that endpoint. But if you're trying to say you're continuous on a closed interval, you're attempting to include this endpoint the limit isn't going to exist as you approach that endpoint because it's impossible to approach it from both sides. So check and see if when you approach that value from the only side you can approach on, if that equals the function value there, you are allowed to include that in your interval of continuity.